Welcome to another episode of our FIFA 22 Hamburg career mode. We're up to episode number three today, where we'll mark the club's return back to the Bundesliga for the first time since they saw their relegation in 2018. And it should make for an interesting season, considering how dominant we were in Bundesliga 2. We'll try to maintain that sort of form and avoid relegation this season. That may mean some changes to our squad and formation. You can see I've opted for the 4 triple 2 this time around. A variation of a 4 4 2 system, but allowing the less center attacking mid and right center attacking mid to play further forward and a little bit more centrally. This is mostly because we have to factor in Han into the starting 11 somewhere. This is a pre-contract deal that we negotiated in January of season one. And I think striker would be the best fit for him. At the same time, I didn't want to exclude Mintheimer from the starting 11 because he was the club's leading goal scorer last season. But looking over the comments from the last episode, it seems like Krause to Cam was a trending theme. And I agree, that's the area that I think he plays best. This formation will work out perfectly with both Kittel and Krause having a five-star weak foot, they're essentially interchangeable. We can move around the team as needed. And this was sort of my plan all along. I wanted to wait until we were in the Bundesliga before changing Krause's position because he's going to see a massive rise in his rating all the way up to a 79 overall now. And as far as development plans go, I'm going to keep him on the striker dev plan to help improve his shooting attributes in order to make him a more well-rounded player, but I don't plan on changing his position again. That begs the question, where else in this Hamburg team we should look to upgrade from? And despite Hoyer Fernandez being goalkeeper of the tournament in Bundesliga 2, unfortunately, I think his time as a starting GK for us has come to an end. With him essentially peaking in his rating and 28 million for us to spend, we absolutely are going to make a transfer there and sign an ex-Bundesliga player, current Liverpool man, Loris Karius. This is a nice realistic transfer because Karius is set to leave Liverpool at season's end IRL. I assume that is going to be a free deal, which unfortunately we couldn't negotiate for this save. But some good storylines as well, because back in 2018, that is when Hamburg saw relegation from the Bundesliga. Karius, on the other hand, was playing in the Champions League final against Real Madrid. We all know how that match ended, but at this stage in his career, I think a move back to the Bundesliga is probably what's right for him. A lot of people forget how successful he was under the mind system with Thomas Tuchel. It's why Jurgen Klopp looked to sign him as soon as he was appointed Liverpool manager. And at the end of the day, this is just 5 million that's going to be taken out of our transfer budget, leaving us a lot of funds to improve at other areas of the team. We're not quite done with transfers, still a few deals to be made, but a big shout out to you for the support shown so far on this series. If you are liking the content, make sure to leave a like down below and subscribe if you're new around here so you stay up to date when new videos go live. When originally starting this crew mode, I knew at some point we would look to return Jan Fita Arp back to Hamburg. Back in FIFA 18, he had an incredible potential of 89 and was rumored to be Germany's next wonder kid that kind of sparked the transfer to Bayern München. I can definitely see it as a difficult decision. On one hand, Bayern is one of Germany's most reputable clubs. On the other, he's just not getting the playtime he needs to develop as a player. So I think the best case scenario is making a move to another Bundesliga club. And for now, he's going to be a rotational player coming off the bench, but given enough good performances, he may even be a starting striker. Just 4 million to finalize this deal, leaving us a lot of funds to work with in the January transfer window. We'll see how we get on in the Bundesliga, and then we can kind of reorganize the team as needed. Offers were starting to come in for some of our own players. We have already one international call-up with Sonny Kitzel. Kind of surprised to see that given he's only a 75 rated player, but Bayer Leverkusen were interested for him along with someone who will probably be a future international for Germany in Wagnermann. I'm going to hold off on these deals for now because one, they're crucial players for us and they were a big part in our promotion campaign. I think further establishing them as Bundesliga quality players before maybe letting them leave is the best way to go forward. We will, however, see a few departures. I just didn't get on with Glatzel's play style. I know he's a relatively new addition to Hamburg, but we'll let him leave for FC Twente. Mikkel was a third or fourth choice goalkeeper. He'll be departing for Ipswich Town. And finally, we have a center defense man that I never used. So Roar will be leaving for a club in the Eredivisie, which fun fact, the city that it's located in is the oldest in the Netherlands. A whole bunch of loan deals to discuss as well. Primarily, these are all under 21 players with a few exceptions. A few future prospects as well. David is someone that was super impressive for me early on in the Hamburg save, but 
purely because his overall rating is not up to scratch with some of our other center backs. I think letting him develop over at Union Berlin is the best choice. But two new scouting networks for today's episode, of course, keeping our scout in Germany, searching for any type of player, also heading to South America, which I thought would be a good location because one, we haven't had any transfers from this continent yet in the series. But two, Hamburg's director of football, Jonas Bolt, actually has some strong connections to South America so we can reflect a little bit of realism here by signing some youth academy players. Then also later on in the series, we'll probably get some transfers from leagues like that in Argentina or even Chile. A look ahead at our first month in the Bundesliga, three matches to be played. I would like to walk away with at least three points if we want to keep our goal of avoiding relegation. I think the improvements we made to the team will put us in a good position. Obviously, it's a bit controversial to change our formation after a promotion winning campaign, but hopefully it'll prove to be the right move. Let's get into the gameplay and see how we get on. Not too long ago, FC Köln were in the same boat as us, having been relegated from the Bundesliga during the 17-18 season. They saw the immediate promotion to the Bundesliga and have sort of maintained their standings. Signing some pretty good players along the way and continuing that transfer policy in career mode, Abel Ruiz at the striker position. We'll see if the signing of Karius as a shot stopper can limit the Köln attack and hopefully lead to as many clean sheets as we had last year, also relying a lot on our homegrown talent, Krause, but it's Cohn with the first highlight. Bit of misfortune from Kitzel to have that deflected pass go right back to the Cohn attack, and they will open up the scoring 15 minutes in. Not the debut I think Karius was hoping for, but we're looking to respond. It is Krause 19 minutes into the fixture, going down the byline, and he's going to send in the perfect cross. Kitzel somewhat redeeming himself by opening up our scoring for this season. I know that he is a German international now in this save, and he's certainly one of the better goal scorers in this Hamburg squad. Still in the first half, though, and Tielemann sending in a cross. It falls to Abel Ruiz, the new transfer for them, volleys this effort home. And I can't really blame Karius too much on the goals that he was conceding. I think this was just a fantastic bit of play from Kohn showing that they are one of the better sides in the Bundesliga. The competition this season is ruthless. I think we have our work cut out for us if we do want to stay in Germany's top flight. But Kitzel, great cross sent in to Han. Our new signing should have opened up his scoring. But unfortunately, that effort going wide can some be with a great run. Scored a hat trick last season, led the Schweizer Bundesliga in assists. So he's proving to be an integral player in this team. Not someone that I would think of straight off the bat, but... You know, sometimes you need that crucial midfielder and also to have him as kind of a more defensive presence to go along with the attacking mindset that Krause offers. But we're slightly into the second half and Kynes will go with a long shot effort. Karius maybe should be doing better there. Allowing three goals isn't the best. And I think this of the three was the easiest for him to save. Taking a look even from the replay, should be giving his glove to it. Optioning to make our first change, Han being brought off for another one of our new signings in ARP. Offers something a little bit different. He's more pacey and also has pretty good dribbling statistics. I think shooting wise, he needs to work on that aspect of his game because in front of goal, you've got to get the equalizer there. Fortunately, we do create some more chances, but this cone keeper just kept on denying us. It was nearly raced to get the goal, but the keeper gets gloves to it and denies that effort. Kynes playing the over the top through ball now over to Modest, and that is going to be a fourth and final goal for Kohn. I'm not going to deny that they were the better side on the day, but I felt like two thirds of the way through the match, things were pretty level and we need to do better with taking the opportunities that were given. But I think this first Bundesliga season is a lot about learning, taking lessons from the matches we do lose and hopefully implementing some of that into our future fixtures. It is Dortmund away that will play next. Lineup wise, I'm not the biggest fan because they're playing a few players out of position like Holland over at left wing. Still a strong side nonetheless. And as a reminder, they were one of the two best teams in the Bundesliga last year. Signal Iduna Park has to be one of the most difficult atmospheres to travel to as a club in Germany. The fan support is incredible, and this is going to be an integral match for Karius, looking to redeem himself after a somewhat poor performance in our season opener. But I've got to say, either he lucked out or he put himself in a good position on those two initial chances, because now, 15 minutes in, it is Yata running it down the right wing, has a few options in the middle, decides to go solo, it falls straight to Krause, and showcasing some of his good finishing ability. Even though he is a center attacking mid now, he started as a striker, so clearly he can score goals. Even taking a look at the replay, 
I think that is Maselko that just mistimed his jump. Getting that first goal against Dorman is so crucial because once you get a goal up on the CPU, especially this Dorman side, they start to push players up, which should make counterattacking a lot easier. Quality save there from Karius and a good start to the match for him as he's asking more from his defenders. But finally, a highlight again, 39 minutes through. It is Yatsa who was in mind of the match, in my opinion. Now a certain part of our starting 11 as we shift back to this 4-3-3. He was so good last year before his injury, and we still want to be mindful of the minutes he's playing. Don't want to re-aggravate that injury in any senses, and hopefully come season's end, he can be back at full fitness. Dortmund continuing their pressure, looking for the equalizer. Karius having none of it though, and the Holland header going over the crossbar. But again, it is going to be Julian Braun now that finds Holland, and it's going to be 1-1. 62 minutes played. It was really a matter of time before you see the goal from Holland. Nice to see him back at full fitness again for Dortmund IRL and scoring in his first fixture. But a brief moment where Dortmund's defense was caught sleeping. We ended up getting that shot on target. Berkey will hit that one wide, but Kitzel finding Vinsheimer goes for the finesse shot effort. A little bit of fortune on the deflection from Mats Hummus and Roman Berkey unable to to react in time. Credit to Vinsheimer though, getting the shot on target and at least testing this Dorman defense. Following that goal, we'll move some players around and allow Amici to get his first appearance of the season. Was super impressed with him with the half season we had in season one. Of course, scored that crucial long shot goal in the final match of the Bundesliga two season. But Andre Hahn is Bundesliga certified as he goes with the cross goal effort, making it three and probably securing us the win here. We want to get as many goals up on Dortmund as possible because their press is going to continue being relentless. But good to see this from our pre-contract signing. I felt like our tactics didn't necessarily fit Han the best, but now that he is kind of coming on as a substitute and can play as that striker with pacing wingers around him, it is absolutely perfect. Amici getting in a goal scoring position is going to square that one across and it's a brace for Han. Probably is the easiest goal that he'll score for us, but 4-1 regardless. Dortmund will get one final chance here in the 90th minute, plus extra time. And this is more of a consolation goal than anything. Karius did enough in this match to regain a lot of my confidence. I think he just needed a little bit of time to settle into this Hamburg squad. He is playing behind a new defense after all, and this could be one of the biggest wins we have all season and may even give us the confidence to tally up more wins. I thoroughly enjoyed last season's cup run in the Dave Beppo call. Would be nice to continue that form this year. As we did see a victory in the second round against Braunschweig, courtesy of goals from Kitzel and Hahn. That matches us up against Bundesliga 2 side Regensburg for the third round. I'm not going to automatically disqualify our opponents because last season we were in their shoes, defeating Bundesliga clubs. Also rotating the squad a lot, giving players like Fita Arp the nod at striker. How about this for a first goal for the club? What a return back to Hamburg in front of the home fans and a chip shot to the far post. A good ball to set him up in the first place. This is why I signed Feet the Arp for just a 4 million fee. I think he offers a lot of squad depth to the team and someone that could break into the starting 11 in future seasons. We have to remember he is still quite young and dynamic potential can take over here. Nice fake shot to create the space. Unfortunately, the keeper getting off his line quickly. Good bit of build up play from Regensburg, but we do win back possession and that is going to be another slide tackle from behind a red card offense. This is something I hope is passed in future weeks because it's one of the biggest problems in career mode right now, along with some of the glitches in the youth academy. I thought it would be pretty easy sailing for the remainder of this match going with some long shot efforts from Krause, but Regensburg actually put up quite the fight, still getting goal scoring positions and a couple of good blocks from the likes of Ambrosius to make Hoyer Fernandez's job easy. Shifting focus to the second half, just 30 minutes or so left to play. Quality save on Hoyer Fernandez's near post as we set up Kitzel, going with a finesse shot effort from just outside the 18 yard box, going narrowly wide. But this is probably the best save of the match given the circumstances and what will lead to a counter attack. Amici playing the ball inside. It is Krause over to race. The quick passing play will set up Vince Heimer and that will make things too. Although we started with the four triple two formation tactic, I think the four three three just works best with this system of players. It's something that we're familiar with and also plays to our squad strengths, but just 10 minutes left to play. The Regensburg player kind of baiting us in to try to tackle him, 
but eventually they will get their goal. Would have been nice to see Hoyer Fernandez maintain a clean sheet given the few appearances he is going to have for us this season, but still a pretty dominant display. We did have an extra player after all. So we're through to the quarterfinals in consecutive seasons. I'll preview our opponent for said quarterfinal later on in the episode, but for now, we'll focus on the Bundesliga and we'll travel away to Germany's capital, Berlin. Of course, they've seen some departures like Matthias Cunha to Atletico Madrid, but they brought in the former Ajax player, Ecken Lecamp, and also the Sparta Praha player, Holcek, who is one of the best U21 players in career mode. But given how well he's played for us so far at Hamburg, I would say Krause is right up there with the best U21 talents. Now that we've settled into the Bundesliga season, I was hoping we could keep form with this Hertha Berlin squad, but what a mistake to make from Karius. I mean, part of that has to go down to me. Ultimately, I was passing back to the keeper, but I don't know. Something about Karius between the sticks doesn't leave me with a whole lot of confidence. On one hand, he has pulled off some good saves, but I need to know moving forward that we won't see those kind of mistakes. It is kind of a shame because I was hoping Karius would be the marquee transfer of season two. I think all the storylines are right to have him here at Hamburg, but we will continue evaluating the situation as the career mode goes on and maybe we'll make a change as needed moving forward. But good save there from Karius to keep us in the match, just down one goal and that effort from Holcek going just wide. Orsic now playing a pass in the middle and this is an offside call. A good line from our defense to push Serdar offside and we'll go into the break still within reaching distance. Still 45 minutes left to play, but this Hertha Berlin dominance will continue. I don't think we've had a single attacking highlight, just Karius saves up to this point. A good stretch to deny that effort. And these are the sort of things that I really like about having him as our number one, but he's going to need to improve if he wants to keep his spot. This is just a fantastic finish from Holcek. We were talking about him as an impact player going into the match. He certainly showed it throughout these 90 minutes. If we do want to get anything out of this, I think Andre Hahn is the right player to bring on. He scored those two crucial goals against Borussia Dortmund, and we need two goals if we want to find the match level. Ending up winning back possession here in the 63rd minute, and it is Han, who I think his strongest point is his consistency in front of goalies. Not the paciest, doesn't have the best dribbling, but I think his shooting attributes are still top notch, and his composure is the best in the squad. With just a few minutes left to go, will we be able to bring things level? A good header one from Vuskovic. Now Han bringing this on to his preferred right foot, finding Kinsombi over to Yatsa. Good save though from Christensen to deny the effort. Again, Han played through 87th minute and this one going off of the post. We were so close on so many chances. Even here, we're playing constant pressure, trying to win the ball back in our opposition's half and try to create something, but they continue to deny those crosses and we will fall in this one. A very entertaining fixture from a neutral perspective, but it won't be helping our cause to climb up the Bundesliga table. We'll check in now mid-January and see how our season has gone up to this point. I'm really not sure what to make of our Bundesliga season so far. On one hand, we dropped points in matches that I think we could have won. On the other, we had some underdog victories like that against Borussia Dortmund, who are not having a great season so far. They're in 11th. We are in 9th. If we can stay mid-table, I would be absolutely over the moon with that. Take a look at the rest of the league. It appears that FC Bayern are on the road to another consecutive Bundesliga title. They're going to be the team to beat in this series, but that's a few seasons from now before we start thinking about that. As far as goals go, it is Vince Heimer again who leads the club. 8 from 18. Krause, again in a more attacking role, has contributed 7 from 19. And Andre Hahn, a new addition, 5 from 10. For assists, Krause leads the way, 7 from 19. And you've got a few players there with 3 and 2 assists. Good news from our youth academy, Dextra is finally 16 years old, which means that he can be promoted to the senior team. We'll send him out on loan right away, and I think by the end of the season, he could be approaching an 80 rating. I want to get our youth academy heavily involved with this being a road to glory, and Dextra seems to be the top talent, covering some of the other prospects that we've got. Schwartz, a German center midfielder slash center attacking mid, and also Da Costa, a Brazilian center forward slash striker, who has a pretty good distribution of his stats. I might even move him back to a center attacking mid because he's got great dribbling. Of course, we are through in the day of Faithful Call, now into the quarterfinals against the team that defeated 
defeated us last season, Borussia Mönchengladbach, looking to get our revenge. But an outlook for the next episode. I think the big brand exposure objective that we're trying to accomplish is making that crucial first team player signing to either a midfielder or a forward. If you have any transfers in mind, feel free to leave that in the comment section. We still have 15 million to work with. But a big thanks to channel members for supporting what we do here on YouTube. If you ever want to learn more about the membership program, click the join button right underneath the video. But that's going to be a wrap for this episode of the Hamburg Crew Mode. If you enjoyed it, make sure to leave a like, subscribe if you're new. But until next time, this has been Flick. I'll be talking to you all again soon.